I'm not sure if I would call this the most unique film of the year, but it certainly, without a doubt, 100%, is the most peculiar movie of the year. <laughs> And today we have the movie that literally seems to be splitting up friend groups left and right. <laughs> Sasquatch Sunset. This is all I knew about the film before I saw the trailer. I saw two reviews for it. One was some rando on TikTok who literally got on the platform and said, hey, this movie had 40 plus people walking out of the theater during Sundance. I wanted to be one of those people, but I pushed through so that I could make a video like this. But man, this was a movie that was actually hyped up and I watched it and I regretted it. Then I saw IGN give it a review and they, they gave it a 10. They gave it a 10 out of 10. Bro, I, I'll, never, I'll never stop saying that IGN's cracked. Like, but you see the, the quandary that we're presented with now, right? Because before I even saw a trailer for the movie, I was literally told, oh, people either hate it or love it. Then I saw the trailer and I was, I was intrigued. Cool, I like what we're doing here. It's a wild concept, but you know what? I'm in for it. I love a weird film. So the directors of Sasquatch Sunset, we have Nathan and David Zellner. This is their second feature film, their second full-length feature film. They directed three episodes of The Curse, which is like the one more recent A24 thing I still haven't seen, but it's a series on Showtime. What is Showtime? I know is the, your next question. Who has Showtime is also a very good question, but also for you true nerds and nerdettes out there, or as my gal pal got very excited about, uh, the Zellners are heavily involved in the old series uh, Red vs. Blue. I never got into Halo, so admittedly I know, you know, jack all about this. They did heavy work in VFX, even some like voice work I think. Also, funny that Jesse Eisenberg is in this film because Jesse Eisenberg is in another film that I like a lot. They helped to produce The Art of Self-Defense. If you haven't watched it, 100% worth your time, hard recommend. There are only four characters. It's the family of Sasquatch, but we have basically a mother, father, and then their two kids. Jesse Eisenberg is in this movie. Don't need to get into his filmography too much. I just, because household names, I kind of just say the name and move on. Then Riley Keough, I always hear the name and I never recognize the face. Granted, you can't really recognize the face in this movie, but she's been in a lot of things that I love. She was capable in Mad Max Fury Road. She was the character of Stefani in the movie that I did review, uh, Zola. And she was uh, our lead, Grace in The Lodge, a movie that I reviewed years ago when it came out and absolutely painted the movie, but she was in it. It's literally four actors all in Sasquatch suits and full makeup. I didn't tell you who they were. You'd have no way of finding out. I have been racking my brain how to approach reviewing this film, and I think the best way I can do it is just approach it the way I do all the others. What is this movie about? I'm sure you're asking, especially after seeing that trailer. It's literally a family of Sasquatch in the woods trying to just, just living and surviving. That's it. Th th that's the movie. It's a Sasquatch slice of life. Very bold choice. I respect the hell out of the filmmakers for doing this. We had arguments with each other after we saw this film as to what happened, what's the point. Like, don't get me wrong, I didn't love this film, but there were at least a couple people in our friend group who hated this movie. They believed that this film had no point. It was a pointless film, nothing happened. I think an argument can be made that there is a point to it. I get what they're saying. End of the day, this is a film following four Sasquatch that don't talk. There is not one single line of dialogue in this film. Literally, it's four actors in Sasquatch suits to go on. The entire movie, 
hoots, hollerings, grunting. They're communicating and they're pantomiming. If you get basic human communication or even animalistic communication, more or less you can pick up what they're putting down. You kind of get what they're saying to each other. But there is not one line of dialogue in this film. For me, to do that, to have it literally follow these four Sasquatches, they rummage around for food, survive the wilderness, have sex in the, in the middle of the forest. Very bold of them to get these high profile actors, at least a couple of really well, well known quantities, these names, but just to cover them in a suit and makeup. How many times do you see this kind of thing done in the world of cinema? Not, not often. It's kind of like when you watch Dread, right? Like the, the Dread 3D that bombed at the box office but was really good. Carl Urban under that helmet and he never once in that entire movie shows his face and he's a very well-known big actor and he wasn't like oh put it on my contract you have to see my face he was like no i'll play the character and this will work if you don't see his face it just it'll it'll work even better and it does it's weird that i'm equating sasquatch sunset to dread right now but this, this is the world that I'm, I'm i live in this is the one that i've created for myself the last positive note that i put in here was I more or less understood what they were going for here. Look, is there some grand family drama here? Not necessarily. Is there some widespread message or sweeping narrative? Perhaps not. If you're watching this family of mythological creatures wander through the forest, survive, you're watching how they communicate and how, although it's different from us, at the same time there's a shocking amount of similarities, a lot of humor to be had from the situations that they find themselves in and put themselves in often. There's a light commentary on protecting the environment, kind of, just human intervention and what it's doing to the, the forest. I mean, if I had to be honest in my hot of hots here, sure, there's not really a point to this film. I also don't mind just watching movies that don't necessarily have a point. It's literally the soapbox that I get on when I talk about something like rubber, which I love rubber, and the entire point of that movie is that there's no reason for anything that happens. There's a telekinetic sentient tire that goes around blowing people's heads up and from the word go they say this movie has no point in joy. And I did. And this movie, Sasquatch Sunset, doesn't really have a point but I got enjoyment from it. I laughed, I scoffed at some scenes, I was disgusted here and there. Sure there wasn't like oh mama we must make our way to across across the, the, the forest dune over there before winter sets in. He's just animalistic humanoids that don't exist, just surviving, not really thriving, just surviving and existing. And it was kind of enough for me for the sake of what they were trying to do. Again, I didn't love it. I'm just defending the film for what it tried to achieve. The cons I put, there's a lot of dot 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 crude humor. We all know how old movie man here feels about comedy. On one hand, it's subjective, and I can derive enjoyment in the hee hees and the ha ha's from quite a lot of anything out there. I'm not a huge fan of the crude humor in this movie. It makes sense. The crude acts, the Sasquatch. <laughs> it's not sound like David Attenborough. The crude acts, the Sasquatch do. Thematically makes sense and is very diegetic to their, their their characters, for lack of a better term. If you want to be even more derivative of this film, low key, it is just an hour and a half of four human beings in fursuits grunting and shouting at each other. People that want a film that's a bit more substantive, 100% you're gonna hate this. It's not gonna be your cup of tea. I was not exaggerating, I was not kidding when I said there is no dialogue, not a word spoken. It's just grunting and shouting and ooga oogas and unga bungas for an hour and a half. I think if you have that expectation going in, it'll be a much more bearable, perhaps even an enjoyable experience. <laughs> While there is a dot 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 tale that unfolds, one could argue this film lacks a story. Yeah, it's the main argument we had when we left the theater. There's a lot that could be extrapolated from the events on screen. That's the nature of art, right? You feel a certain way and then you seek desperately to find a label and cling to it. And this film is no exception to that. There's not really a clear cut answer here for you, but as you watch the film, you're meant to kind of make up that answer. It lacks a traditional 
narrative, a traditional story, but if you dig hard enough, either find or assign it one. And then this is always kind of a pet peeve of mine in films. Things just kind of happen. It's a series of hijinks and vignettes. They're just a series of scenes of Sasquatch interacting with themselves and their environment in varying degrees, and that's the entire film. This is not a film for everybody. I'm not even sure if it's a film for me. I don't have an overwhelming desire to see it again. I don't have a desire to buy it when it comes out. I'm not even sure if I can recommend it per se. It's a film that I think everybody, for the most part, a film that I think everybody should watch once. It's a film that you watch to say that you've seen it and so I can gauge more opinions on it. I mean, is it good? So I, I'll give you my rating, but in terms of can I recommend this? I mean, as an experience, sure, but I don't think you need to see it in theaters. It is admittedly a very unique experience and I respect and admire them for having this idea and then executing the idea. Between my personal enjoyment and the quality of a film as a whole, middle of the road, I would give Sasquatch Sunset a, I'd give it a three out of five. I'd put it on that kind of average scale. There's, there's enough in there that's unique and unprecedented to like make it on my radar and be enjoyable to an extent. For all that it does that's creative and interesting, it then doesn't really fully come full circle on Sasquatch Sunset is a film that exists and similar to something like Skinamarink, you'll either love it for attempting to do something that most films would never even risk doing. Maybe a waste of your time, maybe because it tried something different, it didn't, it, it didn't work for you because it's not what we're used to. I don't know. It's very unconventional and for that I, I will respect it and I will definitely bring it up in conversations in the future regarding cinema. But in terms of top 10 for the year, not me. That's all I gotta say about Sasquatch Sunset. Thank you guys and gals so much for watching. What do you think? I would love if, if there was ever a time for the, the lurkers to comment down below and tell me what they thought about this film or your takes, please do. But in the meantime, stay tuned for whatever movie I review next. And goodbye, travelers. <laughs>